Well, it's been three generations in a row that Intel's i5 processor, the lowest among the series of the unlocked processors, you know, those with the K on the end, has been given beautiful performance that will not embarrass anyone in gaming. But this time something has happened here that could be very, very significant. The 13600K is the processor I'm most excited to test. Yes, the i9 is always the monster with the better performance, but most people will find it unnecessary. This is exactly where the 13600K comes into play. Intel continues their trend of making the i5 the highest of the series, of course, because there is also the 13400 for the processor that the majority are going to buy, and rightfully so. Until recently, the i5 processor would have come with 4 cores and 8 processors. Since the 8th generation of Intel, or more precisely, well, since the, the first Ryzen 5, we got a processor with 6 cores and 16 processors. This was more or less the standard for the 12th generation of Intel, where we remained with 6 performance cores, but 4 more efficiency cores were added to the i5. That brings us to a total of 16 processors. And now another generation has passed and without being any real threat to the status of the i5. In addition to the refinements of the 13th generation, we got four more efficiency cores, a total of eight, which brings us to a total of 20 processors <laughs> that was considered up to two generations ago to be the top leading edge performance for Intel. Together with the improved memory and the higher clock speed out of the box, of course, of 5.1 GHz Turbo, this processor is a serious contender against everyone. So let's see what I mean. I want you to focus with me on the results against the 12900K in the Synthetix benchmarks. This processor looks almost one level below the 12900K, a very respectable place for an i5 processor. But Synthetix tests are never the full story. I want you to focus on the performance test for the creator software. The i5 gives amazing performance here. In Blender, we see that the difference is about 5%, and especially in Adobe, where there is a preference for single core performance in a different few percentages is quite negligible. That's crazy. In gaming, he is not ashamed to crush the 12900K in any of the tests that we ran. Well, except CSGO. Look, it's not new that we're seriously recommending every time to anyone who wants to buy a gaming computer to consider settling for the i5. There are a few games that have utilized more than six cores, and here you have eight more that will help you in multitasking such as streaming or working on heavy software while performing operation at the same time. The new i5 looks like a product worth considering for serious work without feeling deprived. And of course, we mustn't forget, you can also save with a Z690 motherboard and even DDR4 memory. There's also a video on this exact topic on the way, so make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to look further into comparison, whether it's already worth upgrading to DDR5 or is it still a waste of money. So don't forget to subscribe. And all of this can only raise its value even more compared to the comparison of AMD, that currently the closest competitor they have is the 7600X, which in terms is quite similar. And in gaming, they have quite similar performance, but the 13600K beats it in anything beyond that. And it can only raise its value even more compared to the competition of AMD. But currently the closest competitor they have is the 7600X, which in terms of cost is quite similar. And yes, in gaming they do have quite similarly performances, but the 13600K beats it in everything beyond that. And he did all of this with standard performance with 360 cooling, which brought him to a sink temperature of 63 degrees. Relative to all the other processor, it's, it's almost an air condition. So the 13600K is not the best processor for gaming. It's not the most powerful for production either, but there could easily be a situation that with this price tag and the combination of capabilities, it's clear that this processor can be one of the most profitable processor of the coming year. Without any asterisks, without any hidden lines, just like that, if you don't have to squeeze out a few more percentages of frame or a few seconds in rendering, you probably don't have to waste much more or look any further than the 13600K. So what will be the next step for AMD who have been stuck on six cores in Ryzen 5 for four years? 